Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, I am going to discuss Torricelli's theorem. We will be calculating the velocity of efflux, the range, the maximum range and time taken to empty a tank. Now, suppose you have a closed tank containing water or any liquid. The level of liquid is H2 and uh, the area of the tank is capital A. The area of the opening is small a. So this water is coming out through this opening with velocity v1. Okay. Now I have taken this region and I am identifying this region as region 1 and the top surface as region 2. Now from Bernoulli's theorem, we have the sum of pressure plus kinetic energy per unit volume plus potential energy per unit volume. The sum of pressure, kinetic energy per unit volume, potential energy per unit volume, it is constant. It is constant. So that means if I take this region 2 and region 1, if I take these quantities for region 2 and these quantities for region 1, they will be equal. So for region 2, I have marked the pressure to be P2. So this is P2, so pressure is P2 plus half rho V2 square plus rho G H2, it is H2. So for this point, it is P1 plus half rho V1 square plus rho G H1, it is at height H1, pressure is P1 in this place. Okay, now from equation of continuity, equation of continuity, we have for this part area is A and velocity is V2. So A into V2 is equal to area of this opening is small a, A into V1. Okay, so that gives this gives V2 is equal to A V1 by capital A. Okay. Now this small a area of this opening is very small than capital A. Area of the tank. Okay. So in that case, this quantity will be almost negligible, very small. So in that case, this is almost equal to zero. So velocity of the top surface when the water is coming down from this opening with velocity v1, the top surface will appear to be stationary. Okay, v2 is zero. So this term is gone now. So now what we are left with? We are left with P2 plus rho g h2 is equal to P1. This term is gone. Is equal to P1 plus half rho v1 square plus rho g h1. Okay. Now let us reduce this expression and find the value of v1. So half rho v1 square is equal to p2 minus p1 p2 minus p1 plus rho g h2 minus h1. So that gives v1 velocity of efflux is equal to 2 by rho p2 minus p1 plus 2g h2 minus h1 square root of this. So this is the velocity of efflux, velocity of efflux, velocity of efflux. So velocity of efflux is the velocity with which this liquid comes out through this opening. Okay. Now, See, this 
opening is exposed to the atmosphere so since the opening is exposed to the atmosphere at this point the pressure will be equal to the atmospheric pressure so that means this, this term p1 can be replaced by pa p1 can be replaced by pa where pa is the atmospheric pressure atmospheric pressure okay now in case this tank is open tank for open tank what will happen for open tank this upper surface is also exposed to atmosphere in that case p2 will also be equal to will also be equal to pa so p2 will be replaced by pa p1 is already pa so that means this quantity will be zero p2 minus p1 will be zero so in that case this velocity of efflux it will be equal to square root of 2g h2 minus h1 okay now here h2 is the height of the top surface and h1 is the height of the opening so that means height of the top surface from the opening this height it will be equal to h2 minus h1 h2 minus h1 now if i take this to be equal to h small h h2 minus h1 is equal to h so in that case this expression reduces to v1 equal to square root of 2g h v1 equal to square root of 2g h so that is the free fall velocity as if the object is falling some object is falling through height h okay so after fall if your body is dropped from height h after falling through height h the velocity is square root of 2g h okay so this is identical to that expression so this is torricelli's theorem so according to torricelli's theorem the speed of efflux from an open tank is given by the formula which is identical to that of a freely falling body so this is the velocity of efflux provided the tank is open okay now based on this we will calculate the range range means the distance at which this water will fall okay now see this uh, this is the velocity of efflux so for this tank suppose opening is at this particular point so this is the water level so water level above the opening this height is h okay now from this opening water is coming out velocity of efflux is 2g h so this water will fall like this at this point so this distance is the range this r is range okay now what is this height see this total height is h2 this height is h so that means the height through this water falls this height this height this will be h2 minus h okay this is h2 minus h so for the vertical in the vertical see v1 is in this direction so initial velocity along the vertical direction will be zero so in that case if i use the expression s equal to use this expression s equal to ut plus half at square so in vertical direction in vertical direction motion along vertical direction the displacement is h2 minus h so h2 minus h is equal to 0 into t t is the time taken to reach this point initial velocity along the is this direction is v1 equal to 2gh so initial velocity in this direction will be 0 plus half gt square okay so that gives t is equal to 2 times h2 minus h divided by g square root of this so this is the time taken to reach this point okay so and the, now what is the horizontal velocity is this is 2g h okay 
so the range it is horizontal velocity into time taken to reach the bottom point so that is r is equal to v1 is 2gh square root of 2gh multiplied by square root of 2h2 minus h divided by g so that gives range is equal to 2 times h h2 minus h square root of this so this is the expression for range okay now if suppose this height height of this liquid in the vessel total height if h2 if i replace it by capital h and this height is h so in that case this will be h minus h and this will be r equal to 2 times square root of h into capital h minus h okay so this looks much better so this is the expression for range okay now this result is quite interesting in the sense this if you have a hole at distance h from bottom so height from the top surface this distance will be h minus h if this is at a depth h from the top surface then this will be h minus h so this means if you have a vessel okay with two holes this is the water level suppose this is a vessel this is the top surface this is the bottom surface this is the hole this is another hole so if you have a hole at a depth h from top surface and at height h from bottom surface the range for both will be same so range will be same for height h and for height h minus h okay so this is the expression for range and condition for range now suppose we have to identify the condition for maximum range okay so we have r is equal to 2 times square root of h h minus h okay so that gives r square is equal to how much r square equal to 4 times h h minus h so that is equal to 4 h h minus 4 h square now if r is maximum r square will also be maximum so in that case d r square by d h it will be equal to 4 h minus 8 h is equal to 0 okay if, if the function is maximum its slope will be 0 okay so in that case what do we have we get 8 h is equal to 4 h or h is equal to h by 2 okay h equal to h by 2 so that means if you have if you have a vessel containing liquid then if you have a hole which is at a depth total height is h and this is at depth h by 2 then it will the range will be maximum this will be the maximum range okay so maximum range the condition is h should be equal to h by 2 small h should be equal to this height of the hole should be half of the maximum total height of the water level now what will be the value of the maximum range if you substitute h over here what do we get we get r max is equal to 2 times see because when h equal to capital h by 2 range will maximum so this is h is h by 2 so h by 2 into h minus h by 2 is h by 2 so this is h by 2 so this is how much r max is equal to capital h so this height will be equal to the range is, will be equal to the height of the water level so this is the expression for maximum range so next we will calculate the time taken to empty the tank okay now suppose this is a water tank okay and initial level is capital h 
so small h equal to capital H, when the complete water is drained out from this opening at the bottom, the level of water is h equal to 0. Now, at some instant, the level of water is y. Okay. And so, if the level of water is y, the velocity of efflux v, it will be equal to square root of 2gy. This is from Torricelli's theorem. Okay. Now, if I use equation of continuity, equation of continuity between these two points, between this area at level y and this area. Okay. So, area of the tank, it is capital A, area of the opening is small a. So, we have small a into this velocity square root of 2 gy is equal to capital A multiplied by minus dy by dt. So, capital A multiplied by the rate at which the level of water is coming down. At, it is at y and it is decreasing at rate dy by dt minus sign because the level of water is coming down. So, this is equation of continuity. Here I have used this equation of continuity is a1 v1 is equal to a2 v2. So, this v2 velocity is represented by this rate of fall in height. Okay. Now, from this we have dt is equal to how much? dt is equal to capital A by small a minus dy by square root of 2gy. Okay. Now, I need to integrate this to find the total time. See, at time t equal to 0, the level of water is at height h. At time t is equal to t, the tank is emptied and the level of water is 0. Okay. Now, this on solving, we get t is equal to how much? Twice a by a into root 2 g. So, these terms I have taken it out. Y if you integrate, this is integration of root y. So, that will give you root y between the limits 0 to capital H. Okay. So, this on solving we get t is equal to capital A by small a square root of twice h by g. So, this is the time taken to empty the tank. So, these are the few concepts related to Torricelli's theorem and its application. I hope this is beneficial to the students. Good luck.